What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm uploading my top 25 after week five, week six, top 25 again, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is October now, so we're going to start seeing a lot of upsets. The rankings are going to be moving around like crazy. And there are some big movers in my poll this week. Um, a lot of things look different this week. A lot of teams moved up, a lot of teams moved down. Um, and you're going to start to see that more often now. Um, so Again, normally I upload these types of videos on Monday, but I was in Minneapolis last weekend, so didn't get a chance to record this yesterday, but I did post my weekly review yesterday. If you haven't looked at that, go watch that one, then come back and watch this one so you kind of have an idea why teams are where they are. But um, before we get into my top 25, thank you guys for the support. Thanks for clicking on this video. If you like what you see from me, uh, if this is your first video of mine you're seeing or you haven't found that you've or you found that you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button down below. You can also like, comment, share, um, do anything like that. It really does help support the channel. Uh, and with that all being said, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to give you my top 25 for this week. So as per usual, uh, there are some teams that did drop out of the rankings. Texas A&M, who picked up their second loss, the upset over Miss Mississippi State. Fresno State was upset by Hawaii, so they have dropped out. UCLA was beat by a team that you see on screen right now, so they have dropped out. And then Baylor, um, who lost their game last weekend as well, to a team you're going to see later on in the rankings. Um, so uh, with, with all that, uh, my first five out as of right now are UCLA and Texas A&M. I think those two teams are still very close to the poll in my mind, um, and I could easily see them getting back into the poll. UCLA has got some games to prove it. They still got a game against Oregon, and Texas A&M plays Alabama this week. So if Texas A&M beats Bama, very well is going to find themselves back in the rankings. But three other teams that are, are very close to the rankings are Western Michigan. I've loved what Western Michigan has put out. If you haven't watched a Western Michigan game yet, go watch uh, this game this weekend. Um, Western Michigan's a really good team. Again, their only loss being to Michigan, and you'll find out where Michigan ranks later. Oregon State, who's looked really good this year as well, and San Diego State, one of the 17 undefeated teams left in the nation. You could also throw in teams like Nevada, um, uh, they're pretty close to the rankings as well. Um, again, maybe some of these other teams that dropped out like Baylor, um, they're pretty close as well. Um, but again, that's just my personal first five out. Um, and with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the top 25. So number 25 is Clemson. Yes, I did keep them in the rankings, even though they looked shaky against Boston college, Boston college does not have Phil Jerkovic. Um, and if it wasn't for, um, Grossell trying to pick up that ball instead of falling on it. Um, Clemson may very well could have lost that game. We don't know and we'll never know, but Clemson could have lost that game um, if Nick Grossell fell on the ball instead of trying to pick it up. But again, we're never going to know. So Clemson, in my opinion, right now is surviving as a top 25 team. Um, and, and I know a lot of pe or people are going to say that Clemson doesn't belong in the top 25. They're not there right now. Again, this team needs to take major offensive steps forward if they want to continue to be in the top 25. They very well still could win the ACC. Uh, but again, this is the Clemson team that is on very thin ice for the top 25 poll, in my opinion, right now. I know the AP poll doesn't have them ranked. Um, the coaches still seem to like Clemson there at 21, but Clemson is just hanging on there at number 25. 24 is Texas. So getting back into the rankings um, after a couple weeks off, some good wins um, since Texas has lost to Arkansas, went out and beat a pretty good TCU team, a team that they usually struggle with. Uh, so that, that was a good win for Texas there. Um, and yeah, Texas finding themselves back in the poll. This team has turned around since Casey Thompson came in and started at the quarterback position. Bijan Robinson is playing out of his mind. This is a good Texas team, and they got a big showdown this week. It's Red River. 23 is SMU. They move up two spots from last week uh, to number 23. Uh, they are one of the 17 unbeaten teams left in the nation. Um, and I've liked what SMU has put out. I think Tanner Mordecai is playing well. Uh, lots of wide receivers for SMU are having some big days. Um, this is an SMU team that can be dangerous and I think can pose a threat to Cincinnati, to UCF, to some of the bigger name brands in the American Athletic. Um, so watch out for SMU. I think this is a team uh, that, especially when you look at Cincinnati, they have to watch out for. They're playing some really good football right now. Uh, but Florida, 
Florida for me dropped 11 spots. Yeah, from number 11 to number 22. I just haven't been impressed with this team all year, and it finally showed in that game against Kentucky. Florida had a lot of chances to get into the end zone to score some points, had a lot of great opportunities to win that game, and none of them ever came to fruition. So for Florida to get back up towards the top of the rankings, they got to start playing a little bit better football. Um, three and two now is Florida's record, still above 500, but again, uh, in the SEC and one of the better conferences. So I felt like dropping them out of the rankings would be oh, just way too much, uh, way too harsh. So Florida does stay in the rankings, but got to see this team start to make some improvements overall. Arizona State is at number 21. I've liked this team. You guys know that if you've been a supporter of the channel, you guys know that I've liked this team. Uh, and for Arizona State, they played a really good game against UCLA. And that's a good UCLA team, uh, mind you, as well. So for UCLA to come out, and, or for, excuse me, for Arizona State to come out and do that on the road in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, they've solidified themselves as the top contender in the Pac-12 South. And they still got a lot of games left on the schedule to prove that as well. Should be interesting to watch the Sun Devils the rest of the way. Jaden Daniels and company playing some really good football right now. All right, moving on to the top 20. This is also where I have Wake Forest. A couple teams from the ACC you see on here as well. But Wake Forest at number 20. Um, they weren't in the rankings last week, my personal rankings, but uh, they were in my first five out. And again, this team is playing some good football as well. I like the way Sam Hartman is playing Jaquari uh, Roberson there as well uh, for Wake Forest and this defense as well. Um, playing better than it expected coming into this year. I didn't expect much out of Wake Forest this year and they uh, clearly have proved me wrong, but Sam Hartman is a quarterback that I've liked for a long time. I know I probably haven't publicly expressed it, but I do like Sam Hartman. I like what he puts out of uh, the product he lays out on the field. Um, good quarterback in Sam Hartman, Wake Forest, is going to have a, a fairly easy road the rest of the way. Um, but once they get into November, that's where I think we're really going to find out how good this Wake Forest team is. For now, they're at number 20. At number 19, uh, jump three spots from last week is NC State. So NC State, um, a team here that, again, I really like. I know people are going to argue that Wake Forest probably should be ahead of NC State. But NC State does have that win over Clemson and the close loss to Mississippi. Or it wasn't that close of a loss, but um, the, the loss to Mississippi State, who just beat Texas A&M. Wake Forest doesn't really have a marquee game on their schedule, so that's why NC State uh, above Wake Forest, but playing some good football um, as, uh, as maybe as good as Wake Forest, if not better. Like what this team has put out, still have a lot of chances to prove themselves. Kentucky is here at number 18. One of the three undefeated teams left in the SEC. Kentucky has played a lot of good football. And I've said coming into this year, they were going to be underrated. Um, and again, the same argument for UCLA. When they first jumped into the poll, Kentucky jumped in at 16. I'm not ready to get Kentucky there quite yet. Um, they got some games coming up that I think we're really going to find out how good this Kentucky team is. But Will Levis didn't play well in that game against Florida, um, and they kind of had to rely on their defense. So um, the offense, get more consistent. Kentucky is a top 15 team. Um, I like what I've seen from Kentucky so far. I want to see them do it again. Ole Miss dropped five spots to number 17. I like Ole Miss. Um, I like Matt Corral. Just they, they, they ran into Bama, right? That, 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 that. That, that was the problem. They ran into Bama. Um, you can't penalize them too hard, but again, it's just a matter of they lost, so they dropped, and other teams are going to move ahead of them. Really interesting matchup with uh, a team that, again, has yet to uh, appear on these rankings, but you'll notice did not drop out. So Ole Miss, um, a team that can still absolutely make noise in the SEC, um, can absolutely go out in the SEC and compete um, and be one of the top teams. But again, running into Bama is something that – uh, I'm going to talk about with a lot of teams this year, just they ran into Bama. Bama, a freight train this year, um, looking really good. Ole Miss dropping five spots because of the loss. Coastal Carolina dropped a spot to 16. Again, there's not a lot of big tests for this team um, as they do play in the Sun Belt and they avoid Louisiana in the regular season. And their non-conference was really soft. Um, so again, Coastal Carolina, not really a chance to move up unless other teams end up falling, which we've seen before. Uh, but Coastal Carolina now dropping out of the top 15 because other teams pass them. Speaking of the top 15, here is the top 15. So Notre Dame and Arkansas both moved together uh, down six spots each to 14 and 15. Um, now, uh, again, Notre Dame, they ran into a really good Cincinnati team. And 
that team played a lot better with Drew Pine at quarterback uh, than Jack Cohn. So you wonder if maybe Drew Pine is going to be the starter going forward. Probably not. uh, It'll probably end up being Jack Cohn going forward. But I think a lot of Notre Dame fans are going to start making the argument for Drew Pine to start at quarterback because that offense seemed to uh, flow so much better through him in that second half against Cincinnati, albeit still lost the game. Um, but that Cincinnati team is really good. You'll see where I have Cincinnati ranked in a little bit. Uh, 15 is Arkansas. Just mentioned them a little bit ago. Again, they ran into Georgia. Georgia looks like an absolute freight train this year as well. Doesn't seem like anyone's going to be able to stop Georgia. Um, but Arkansas just did not play like a top 10 team in that game. Now, they, they've they had good wins against Texas and Texas A&M, two teams that are very much top 25 worthy. But for Arkansas to play like that and put out that poor of effort, give all the credit in the world to Georgia's defense, but to not score a point, maybe putting them in the top 10 was overrating them to this point. Uh, But I still think this Arkansas team is a good team um, and they're going to have a chance to prove it. They play Ole Miss this week. I'll preview that matchup more on Thursday when I go through my top 10 most exciting games. Uh, Up five spots from last week is Michigan State, who's remained unbeaten, but gave up 31 points to Western Kentucky. Now, Western Kentucky, a solid team uh, in that quarterback, uh, Zoppy, really good quarterback. He's got a lot of weapons around him as well. Um, But for Michigan State, this this is a really good season thus far. um, But a lot of their bigger tests are still yet to come. They still got to play Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, Indiana. They still got to play a lot of those highly ranked teams in the Big Ten. So um, we're going to find out a lot about Michigan State over the next couple of weeks. Um, But for right now, Michigan State, still an undefeated team. They're at number 13. 12 is Oklahoma State. They move up eight spots from last week. Um, Spencer Sanders did not have a great game um, uh, against Baylor, but that Baylor defense has also been playing really well. Uh, Spencer Sanders had a great game uh, a, a couple weeks ago against Kansas State. And if he can play like that, Oklahoma State can be a top 10 team, can be. This team has impressed me overall this year. Um, This defense is playing some really good football right now. And how about Jalen Warren, an absolutely tremendous story um, with all the running back issues that Oklahoma State has had that made way for Jalen Warren, Utah State transfer, and he has done this absolutely tremendous. Um, Oklahoma State up eight spots, beat a really good Baylor team and held them to only 14 points. Baylor was ranked top 10, top 25, and a lot of offensive categories coming into that game. Uh, Oklahoma State is at number 12. And this th- this might catch some people off guard, but I've jumped Auburn 10 spots to number 11. Coming out of that win against Penn State, I was like, okay, this team is good. They, they were able to ke- keep with a really good Penn State team. And then that game against Georgia State kind of backed me up a little bit. and was like, uh, i not really sure now, you know, is Auburn really as good as they say? And then to go out, have a comeback win against an LSU team that I still think is pretty good, not near the top 25 right now, but at LSU can absolutely get there. To go on the road, play a good LSU team where they've struggled in the past, um, they face their demons, they're able to get that win against LSU. Um, and then looking back, that only loss being to Penn State. I have to put Auburn here at number 11. I like their body of work. I like what um, the, the, I like what Brian Harson has done for this team. Um, Overall, there are a lot of improvements that Auburn can still make, um, and they still have a lot of games left on the schedule. Georgia is still coming up, of course, the Iron Bowl against Alabama at the end of the season. So a lot of interesting games still on the schedule for Auburn. But right now, I think Auburn needs to be looked at as a top 10 caliber team because when they play their best and when Bo Nix is playing well, uh, this is a really hard team to beat uh, in Auburn. So Probably the surprise of the week to a lot of you, but I have them at number 11. Now getting into the top 10, BYU is here at number 10, moving up three spots from last week. BYU struggled at times with Utah State, but Tyler Algier had a great day. This BYU team, in my opinion, is better than the team that surfaced last year. I know I've said that for the past couple of weeks, um, but as soon as they get Jaron Hall back at quarterback, they still got a lot of games on their schedule where they can build more of a resume. They play USC, they play Baylor, even going on the road and playing Washington State. I think that's going to be a resume builder as well. Washington State's played some solid football um, this year. So um, for BYU, a lot of chances to still prove themselves. They're here at number 10 and Michigan moving into the top 10 for the first time in a long time. Um, This Michigan-Ohio State game at the end of the year is going to feel like a big game, and it hasn't felt like a big game for the past couple of years. So 
Um, if both teams continue to play like that, it should be exciting. But anyways, talking about Michigan here, moving up five spots from last week. They were behind BYU last week with a great win over Wisconsin, they move up. I know people are going to say Wisconsin was overrated, la, la, la. Yes, that Wisconsin offense is not great, but that Michigan offense uh, able to uh, get a lot of points, defense able to force some turnovers as well. Um, so for this Michigan team, um, I also don't think this offense, is, this offense still has not turned the ball over once this year. Um, so for Michigan, got to put, put them in the top 10, especially with all that happened last week. A lot of top 10 teams lost last week. Um, Michigan is a top 10 caliber team. I just think they need to get a little bit more of a passing attack. They're looking a little one dimensional, which isn't a big deal because they have the best, uh, the best rushing attack in the nation. Um, but Nebraska coming up this week is a very interesting game. Of course, they still have to play Penn state, Michigan state and Ohio state. So a lot of tests still coming up for the Michigan Wolverines. November is going to be a very interesting month in the big 10. Speaking of Ohio state, they're going to move up two spots here to number eight. Um, the debate for me was whether or not to have Oregon or, or, or Ohio State at seven. Um, and I ended up going with the Oregon Ducks, who dropped four spots after the loss to Stanford. I'm not going to penalize Oregon too hard because to me, Oregon just got outplayed. I don't think Oregon played a bad game. I just think Stanford played a, a really good game, kind of like what happened when Oregon beat Ohio State. Um, Oregon came in and played a really good game. I think that's exactly what happened to Oregon when they went on the road to play Stanford. Now for Ohio State, this defense is getting better. We've seen that over the past couple of weeks. It's got to continue to do so. Um, I know both the polls have Ohio State ahead of Oregon, but again, Oregon's beat Ohio State and I'm not super confident in that Ohio State defense yet. For Oregon, there are definitely some adjustments that need to be made. Overall though, I do feel like this team can still make a run at the college football playoff. Still definitely the favorites to win the Pac-12, but what happens if Oregon picks up another loss? going to be a very interesting story to watch. Oregon's got a lot of games left on the schedule that are tough. So does Ohio State. Be interesting to watch both of those teams later down the line. Oklahoma for me is at number six. They dropped two spots. Um, again, struggling, right? Uh, Oklahoma State's kind of struggling through this season, struggled with Kansas State, uh, but Kansas State returning Skylar Thompson. That's been a problem for Oklahoma the past couple of years. Um, this is an Oklahoma team that is not as good coming into the years we thought they were going to be. However, for Oklahoma can still definitely make a run at the playoff, still very much so one of the better teams in the nation. All right, moving into the top five, you guys probably know the teams by now, but Bama, Georgia, not moving at one and two, two great wins for both these teams over the weekend. Um, that being said, Georgia and Alabama, that gap right now is razor thin. Um, the, Georgia can definitely push their way into number one. They play Auburn this week. That's a team that I have ranked 11th, as you've just seen. Bama plays a and a team that I don't have ranked. So Georgia this, I know a lot of people are going to say last week, Georgia beating Arkansas and th the way that they did, that's moved them into number one. I think this is the week that Georgia can move into number one. But again, we'll see what happens. Cincinnati is at number five. Going to jump back down here. Cincinnati's at number five. This is a player in the college football playoff. I know to a lot of people that might seem crazy to some casual fans, but it is absolutely true. Cincinnati can go out and win uh, and be a player in the college football playoff. They have the resume to do it. It's just a matter of taking care of business in their conference and they can that and they can get there. Two Big Ten teams each move up two spots as well. Penn State and Iowa um, here at three and four. And that's a huge matchup this week. Those two teams will play each other in Kinnick Stadium. The reason I have Penn State ahead of Iowa, I trust this Penn State offense a little bit more. However, this Iowa defense is crazy good. One of the best defenses in the nation this year. Um, both polls have these teams flipped. But again, I just trust Penn State more up to this point. Um, that is my top 25. Uh, again, I expect to see some, some big movements next week as well. There are a lot of big games, Georgia and Auburn, Penn State and Iowa. There are a lot of big games coming up this weekend. So uh, next week's top 25 poll might have just as much movement as this week's. And we're also in October. It's upset season. There are going to be some shakeups in the rankings. Um, so that's going to do it for me. Let me guys know who you have in your top 25. Who are your top five? Let me know in the comment section below. Um, let me know uh, uh, anything else you'd like to let me know in the comment section below. As always, like, subscribe, share, do all that uh, fun, fun stuff. Help support the channel if you would like. And remember to play hard but tailgate harder. See all you guys on Thursday with my week 
preview and predictions. Top 10 games I'm most excited for. Goodbye.